Hey, feel good fathers. I have Wendy Rovers with me, founder of Thrive. I gotta, I gotta make sure I get it right. Thrive Together, is that correct? Divorce Thrive. Divorce and Thrive. Uh, Wendy has a great quote for us to begin, and it is, parents are the first number one teachers in life. Wendy, what does that mean, and how can we apply that to feel good fathers? Well, parents are parents are our number one teachers, the first teachers that we have in our life, and a lot of what we learn from our parents, we we carry through for the rest of our lives, all the good, all the bad and all the in between. So, um, so as a parent, it's really important to, to always be considering what you're saying, how you're acting, how you're showing up, how much time you're spending with your children and how, how you're really, um, involved in their lives. Yeah, that's important. What are are some common patterns that you're seeing? Uh, that fathers are showing up, you know, having your foot in this mediation and divorce space, you're, you're going to be aware of common threads of behaviors that men, how, of how men are showing up. What are you seeing? And then how do we address them? Uh, yeah, by the time, by the time I'm speaking with a, a man or a woman, there's a lot of problems and there's a lot of, there's a lot of miscommunication, lack of communication, a lot of things that are, that are irreparable, but I do and have worked with some uh, couples who've decided to uh, give their marriage one last shot uh, with me. And I think, I think we, we get stuck dig our ha- uh, dig our heels in the sand we there's a right and a wrong and we get we i see that i see that the the communication breakdown is is just that you're stuck so how to get unstuck is 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 to step onto uh his or her island look at things from his or her perspective and and at the same time stop the blame stop the complaining and take 100 percent responsibility for all the problems and and realize that therefore 100 percent responsibility for all the solutions i think when we can take that 100 percent responsibility it's a it's a new perspective and a new way of looking at things and a new way of looking at the relationship. So, for example, I, I met with a couple the other day and they are considering divorce and they were we were discussing uh, mediation or collaboration. What's the best route? They've actually taken a turn and decided to to give their marriage uh, one last, you know, a one last solid effort. And they and they. So we were talking and, um, and the little things that, that people get bothered by turn into huge things. So for, for them, it was, he was always, uh, working late, never showing up for dinner, not, not often not being able to put the kids to bed. Um, so he said that wasn't his fault because he had to be at work. So I, I said to them, uh, to him, if a client said to you, listen, what you're doing right now is not working for me. We need to make a change. You know, some things aren't working out. What would you do? And he said, well, he'd, he'd take care of the problem and he'd, he'd, he'd fix it. I said, so your wife is saying to you, uh, you're not showing up for dinner. This is really important to me. You're not here to put the kids to bed. I, I, I want I want you to have a relationship with your children. And what are you doing? You're ignoring her. This is your problem. So they've decided to take this 90 day challenge and uh, they're on about day 36 right now. And uh, things are looking pretty good. And it's just, it's it's, we get stuck in 
I'm right, you're wrong. What is, I love this perspective of what we're kind of talking about is the pattern of self individuation. We are living in a world where my personal experience is more important than your experience, is more important than our collective experience, is more important than any other identity that we have. And so all the messages that we're receiving are you as the person, as the self-actualized being, that you are the very center of all of your experience. And what that discounts mm -hmm. is the experience of anybody else. There's no collective wisdom, there's no collective sharing, there's no collective relationship, there's no collective experience whatsoever. And so what, uh, what I feel like you're pointing at is uh, twofold. Number one, there's a responsibility of the adult to choose how, how they're interfacing with everybody else around them. So specifically, the responsibility of the husband and father of how they're showing up in the house. And we're figuring out that, what that means. That's what Feel Good Fatherhood is all about. But then there's the other side, which is the world is saying, and if you're serving the world as a master, we're seeing the, the fallout of that, that they will, it will consume your attention. It will consume your focus. There is always another business deal. There is always another phone call to take. The time you get back with your kids, it, it never goes away. Being family first is incredibly important. It's your biggest legacy in the world. That's what Feel Good Fatherhood is all about. I love that you're pointing at this. Are there any reactions as far as uh, your experience about that model for viewing the world, about the sort of the conflict between mm -hmm. self, self individualization, self actualization versus belonging to a community? Yeah, I think our, our society values work. So, if you're a dad walking down the street and you bump into a buddy and your buddy says, Hey, what have you been, what have you been up to lately? And you, you say, man, you know, I've been 18 hours a day grinding for the past six days and I'm working on a huge project. Your buddy says, wow, super. That's, that's awesome. Now take that, take that, a different way you're walking down the street you you bump into the same buddy and he says hey what have you been up to and you say geez i just took the last seven days off to be with my wife to watch some shows together go for some long walks enjoy her company have some wonderful conversations and your buddy just has got nothing to say absolutely nothing to say cool. I'd, I'd fire that and friend. you keep walking <laughs> Pardon? I, I'd fire that <laughs> because friend. our society <laughs> values work our society yeah. values busy our society does not value family relationships love home i mean we 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 think about it when it's all breaking down and it's going to crap, then it becomes important. But until then, it's all about work. How much money can you make? How, how far can you go? Your, you know, your ego's inflated by the cash, the people saying you're great, everything's great, great, great. So yeah, the, uh, society and, uh, culture play a huge role in in relationship it's a big it's a it, it is something to consider for sure how do we navigate that world so we're we're on the precipice now where she the wife in the traditional marriage uh she's bringing home more the earnings are increasing and so more frequently we're seeing a more uh at least a little bit more equal, uh, definitely in the higher, like in the knowledge worker area, like definitely if you're both knowledge workers, you're probably going to be bringing around the same home. Um, how do we navigate that? And um, specifically, like as fathers, so how do we graduate or what is your opinion on how we would graduate from the old way of thinking to this sort of new model? Well, 
it's difficult to speak to everyone because every situation is very unique, very different. And, but in general, uh, I think you really just have to have some serious conversation about what's most important to you in your relationship. And when I speak with uh, any of my clients, what's most important to them are always their children for both. They both, that's, it's, it's the top five, their kids. And it's, it's happiness and joy and laughter that's up there. You know, how do you navigate it? It's, it's, it's simple, basic things, conversation, setting date nights, spending time, realizing the importance of being at home. It's as important as being at work. So it's putting it in your calendar. It's, it's your calendars where you, where you do all your work will make it a scheduled time after five, after six, that's it. You're not taking calls. You're not working. You're with your family. Um, it's just a little, it's the little things. It's the, it's the small things that make a huge difference. It's a stacking of small things that make a big difference in a high quality relationship. I That's love the general... focus. I love the focus on routines. I love the focus on how you're showing up and the rituals that you have as a home. And so, for instance, with my daughter, uh, with everything that was going on, it was very important for her um, to have that daddy show time. You know, so recently we've been watching Star Trek. We're at Voyager. She likes the she likes the female. She likes Captain Janeway, the female captain. She likes Seven of Nine. <laughs> uh, she like loves those characters. And and of course, and, and why not? Why not see the captain? And Janeway's amazing. She's one of the uh, quite an amazing captain uh, in the Star Trek universe. And how it, it took us a while uh, to really understand how important that time was for her because it didn't it didn't really matter what we were watching, it didn't really matter what we were doing. What mattered was that for her was the time. And so there's that ritual. And as a, I know for me, uh, making sure that that was an activity that happened on a consistent basis. And even if she didn't want to, that there was a, a point where I said, hey, uh, what I was communicating, and I'm paraphrasing, uh, not using my actual language was, hey, this is our ritual. Do you want to do that ritual with me tonight? And so I was engaging her and saying like, hey, I want to spend time with you in the way that we've been doing that lately. Do you want to spend time with me too? Uh, and that usually just came out with, you want to watch some Star Trek together? <laughs> so, <That's right. laughs> so there's that piece. Uh, just letting her know mm -hmm. that that routine is in place because that's her time. And now extending that to, you know, what's, what's that moment for my wife where I'm saying, all right, Aaron, I'm spending some time with you today. Like, what are we doing today in this moment? Um, and even, and uh, so, sometimes on occasion, it's kind of like, hey, we haven't talked in a couple of days. Like, really? Can we just sit down for five minutes mm -hmm. and check in? Um, and then also with my my newborn, just making sure that every day, like looking her in the eye, I mean, she's like eight months old. So looking her in the eye, interacting with her, getting a giggle, playing a little bit, picking her up, holding her, changing diaper, putting her to bed, all that kind of jazz. Um, that the rituals, the routines, you can, tell the measure of a person by what they do consistently every day. You can tell the measure of mm -hmm. a person by how they're showing up and you can tell what their values are by where they're putting your time. And I love because I love the way that you place that because when we connect your dot of, if you had a client that had an issue, would you repair that? Right. As fathers, our attention, you know, both to our spouse and our kids is so critical to not only their development, but also to the maintaining of that relationship. I, I can't think of anything more important for a feel good father to do every time than have some sort of ritual in place, some sort of routine in place, some sort of habit in place where they are choosing to put their focus and attention on the, on the members of their family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And you're, and yeah, it, it is awesome. Your uh, time and attention is key and focus is key. And if you, if you 
decide that your time and attention will be placed on your work and your relationship equally, you have a great life. Hmm. You have a, you have an interesting point on, on kids. And so there's this, uh, you, I think you mentioned it earlier on about half mom, half dad. And I'd love to continue this, this discussion into, all right, so dad's got some habits and routines, mom got some habits and routines, that's gonna show up in your kids. So walk, walk me through, Wendy, walk us through, what does this look like? Well, it's, uh, it's, it's part of a um, framework that I've put together that I, that I work through and with clients it ebbs back and forth and it flows uh, depending where clients are at. But a child is half mom and half dad. And as I mentioned before, one of our greatest teachers in life are our guardians or parents, or if you were raised with your grandparents, whoever that may be, they're our first and uh, primary teachers in life. And, uh, and everything that they've taught you sticks with you and what's important is to recognize that that is not you the the work that i do with clients is creating and building awareness within themselves so when i say that a child is half mom and half dad what that means is that everything that mom and dad are teaching them creates beliefs, values, thoughts, feelings within the child. And the child is me and the child is you and the child is everyone who's listening to your show. So so we're this uh we're this pile of teachings and 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 thoughts that have been placed on us. And when you when you start to do some work to create awareness within yourself, you realize that you are not those thoughts that you're having all of the time. You are not that. You are behind that. And when I say behind that, it's your it's your gut feeling, it's your inner wisdom, it's your intuition, it's whatever you want to call it. It's you. So as a parent, it's important to, to, uh, to think about that and to be aware of that. So when you're talking to your child, they are different than you are, but they are highly influenced by, by you. They're little sponges until the age of five. They, they just, whatever you say is just going on in there. It's going on in there. It's, it's going on into their subconscious and they, they have no way of filtering that. They have no way of, of, of saying that, Oh, that's, that's not a great idea or that's a great idea or that's stupid or that's smart or they, they just, they, it just goes in. And, and all these, all these um, ideas that we, that we have are in fact uh, not true for us. So half mom, half dad is important because as a parent, you have a huge influence uh, on your child. And when I work with people, whether they are working on their marriage or transitioning through divorce, that is all the same. You, if you say something that isn't nice or you act in a negative way you are actually putting down half of your child you're hurting them so it's important to be aware of how you speak what you say how you're being how you're showing up because it really does matter to your child i that was kind of roundabout but i hope i I answered it in a, in a, in a, in a, in a sort of way. So let me know what else you need to hear. <laughs> yeah. I think for feel good fathers, the, uh, the importance of the importance of managing not only their identity and contribution to the raising of their kids, 
critically important, but also acknowledging that in each of their children is a piece of their spouse. Is, is that piece of, we can acknowledge the fact that um, we're taking on that role and care of everybody in the house. That there's a, there's sort of a, um, an atlas carrying the world of everybody in the house on our shoulders. And we're all kind of burning that responsibility as, as the spouses, uh, as both parents. So moms and dads are both doing that. But that as feel good fathers, acknowledging the fact that we're contributing to this world, uh, the importance of uh, the implicit nature of what you're saying, of the importance of speaking with respect and with good purpose to your spouse in front of your children. That, that is something that is, um, well, I think that's good behavior. <laughs> you know, should be standard <laughs> good behavior. Uh, you don't get an award for that, right? That's that's the basic. That's that's the basic expectation of that relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and you're showing that, them, you're showing them, sorry to interrupt there, but you're showing them how a relationship can be. They're watching you, they're learning from you, you're guiding them, and you're showing them uh, how a relationship can be through the good times and the bad. 100%, 100%. So this kind of leads into sort of the next piece, I think the next ring of influence, the next responsibility what about finding your people? So we've kind of identified and discussed the feel good father facing in, facing into the family. But I think there's a, a, a secondary support structure of who, who you're surrounding yourself with. Can you talk about the importance of finding your people? Well, it, it can mean everything. I, I, uh, Finding your who's is very important. Your, whether it be your personal trainer, if you want to improve your health, whether it be uh, your financial expert and money person when you want to make proper investments uh, and take care of your money, whether it be a, a, a therapist or a coach, if you want to work on improving your relationship or personal development. Um, they're finding the right people to be in your corner. I mean, they say we are a, 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 a product of the five people that we hang out with the most. So there, it is important finding the right people uh, to help you finding the right babysitter. So you can go on a date with your wife, find um, Maybe you need to free up some time in your life hire a personal chef to come in once or twice a week. Maybe you need a, uh, to hire a cleaning lady. Uh, I mean, this is, it is, it is, it's critical. So, so you can take, take a look at where you want to free up time and then find the people to, to do the work, to fill up that time. And then give, give your, give yourself some extra space and time to have with, your wife and your children. Yeah. Love it. Um, what are some common limiting beliefs that you see around fathers? I think fathers, fathers believe that uh, they should be the major breadwinner. I think that, I think fathers, um, this, in my work and with people that I, the uh, my clients, I see I see dads kind of stepping away from uh, caregiving, stepping away from. Um, they they often say, you know, when when the the kids can get out there and play some ball, then I'll get involved. You know, when the when the mom does this, dad does this. They may have learned this from their parents. Uh, they they aren't sure what they should or shouldn't be doing. They aren't sure uh, if if what they're doing is right. And yeah, so so limiting beliefs come really come back to how we 
were raised as children. So what your mom and dad taught you is often how you feel you should be doing things. So if your mom stayed home and your dad went to work, maybe that's what you think is the, the best way to handle mom, dad, family. Um, yeah, so there's, there, and, and again, this is a, this is speaking very generally. Uh, it's, it's a, it's, it's a way you were raised and brought up is kind of the way that you view the world. And, and that comes back to then doing the inner work to figure out what works best for you and what works best for your family, because things may be very, very different and often mm -hmm. are. This, I think this leads right into your statement that relationships begin with yourself. So how do we, so bridge that gap for us. Like, mm -hmm. what does that mean? Well, in order to bring your best self to, to your relationship, you have to know who you are. And it's, it's not really fair to ask your, your spouse to make you happy to make you feel good, to make you uh, dinner, <laughs> to make you anything. You have to know who you are. You have to be happy within yourself. You have to know uh, what's important to you, what your values are, what your goals are, your hopes, your dreams, your loves, your, your worth. You have to know that first then share that with your partner and your partner will share her or his, or his values dreams hopes goals and then together you move forward in life it's not easy to be in a relationship there's a lot of give and take there's a lot of of of, of things that will come up it's not it's never going to be perfect but it does have to start with you you need to do your work on yourself without expecting anyone else to make you happy or, 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 or without expecting anything really. I think, I think that something that, that we as humans are, are, are often doing is expecting people to give us what we need and want when in fact, you have to give you what you need and want. You have to do that for you first. And so I can speak personally here. My husband and I, we, we don't have expectations of one another. We have agreements. So we set agreements uh, on how, when we want to spend time together, when we want to go to the cottage together, who does this work? Who does that work? And, and then it's interesting as human beings, when we make an agreement with someone, we tend to stick yeah. to it. And if we don't do our part, we have no problem kind of saying, all right, I didn't really, I didn't really uh, meet my end of the agreement. I get it. But when we hold expectations, uh, for someone and we are expecting things first off that person often doesn't even know what we're expecting and and it's very unfair so that would be a good step one create agreements and 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 don't expect anyone else to make you feel happy what would be the next step Oh, the next step I think is uh, being intentional about about uh, what you're doing, what you're saying, how you're acting, and who you're being in the world. So, some of the greatest joy that I have is when I'm working with someone, and they they realize that they are creating their own life. So when you realize that you can create the happiness in your marriage, so we're, so we're speaking to fathers, when you realize that you can create happiness in your 
relationship and in your marriage and in your work at the same time, it's pretty cool. And you can intentionally do what needs to be done, intentionally say what needs to be said, and intentionally move forward in your life step by step by step. And and every day is a new day. You mess up, set your intention and have a great day today. So that, that, that would be the next step. Is there a, after that, the importance of your words, the, the, the words that you speak to yourself and the words that you speak to your partner and the words that you speak to your children are very important. Um, I think that if we pay attention to what we say, we'd realize that a lot of what we say just isn't even what we mean. It isn't even, it's just something you've been saying and you don't even think about it. I think that we don't think often enough and we don't think about what we're saying and we don't think about what we're doing. So it's, overarching everything is to slow down just a minute. You know, this is, this is something very basic and can really be helpful too. You get home from work, you're in the car. Don't get out of the car for five minutes. Sit in the car and think about how you want to show up when you walk in the front door can make all the difference in the world. This is that's one small little tip. This is this <laughs> is so related to what you mentioned about your intentions and what we've been talking about your patterns and your routines. So frequently our family gets the rest and something else gets the best. And in some other circles in in this kind of style we ask for the reset to leave it in the car. So that you're bringing your best home because there is a responsibility and very mm -hmm. specifically to feel good father. So the feel good parent out there, the feel good father, if you're listening, you have that responsibility to bring your best as Wendy's been saying, to bring your best into the house, to bring your best to your spouse and to your kids. Uh, and then to everybody else, uh, as, as that expands, um, I love the reset in the car. So again, the first step is agreements, make agreements with your spouse. Uh, maybe that's an agreements with your kids, just make agreements with your family, set the intention about who you want to be and how you're showing up, the importance of your words and what you're calling into being. Is there, is there another step? There's many steps going back to the first step is, is about creating awareness. So, so that's, that's, that's overarching. Um, next step, I, I would say, um, you know, I'll put seven steps out there for you today, but there's, there's, there's a lot more to this, but next step, maybe, um, I think that we're as, as people and the dads that we're speaking to, it's scary to be, uh, vulnerable. So. If you, if you can let her know or your partner know how you're feeling, how you're really feeling, maybe you're feeling a little left out, maybe you're feeling um, inadequate, maybe you're feeling like you don't make enough money, you're not the big breadwinner that you should be. Vulnerability is, is scary. And it's a beautiful thing. And if you've had your heart broken before, which many of us have, um, maybe the two words that really get in the way are never again. So if you say, if you said to yourself at that time, never again, will I let this happen to me? you shut down uh, the vulnerability that's necessary 
to have an amazing, amazing life and relationship. That's, that's a, that's a next step. And that's a, uh, that's something we could all speak on here for hours and hours. So the tyranny of never again. What's after that? After that, um, I would say is gratitude. Uh, gratitude is, is very important. I have a gratitude journal. And I think when you start to really take a look at all that you're grateful for, it, it, it helps you to realize how awesome your life is right now. So it's a simple tool. Be grateful for five things every day. Write them down and 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 live in gratitude you have so much to be grateful for stop fighting about the little things stop worrying about the small stuff i know it sounds it sounds basic but it's very it's 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 important gratitude is 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 a great way to be to live and how about what do you think about gratitude, oh, Jay? For the feel good fathers? Well, for uh, for gratitude, I think that um, it's important to adopt an attitude that you are the most powerful being in creation. And so at the center of everything that you experience, there's one or two constants. If you're a Christian like me, there's God. But then on the second piece is that the way that you interface with everything that is external to you is up to you. And there are, there are truths, there mm -hmm. is a, a universal truth, that kind of jazz, but ultimately, um, how you choose to view the world, whether it's conscious or unconscious, has the most dramatic impact on the quality of your life and the quality of everything else in it. So the relationship you have, the work that you do, that kind of jazz. Mm -hmm. Gratitude as the, as the primary filter, even if it's subconscious of a, I'm just delighted that everything is happen happening. If you want to be stoic, I'm Orfanti. I'm happy that fate exists. I'm happy, uh, the, that's the direct translation, but the internal piece there of Amar Fati is, I'm happy that it happened to me. You know, and as I like to say, um, as a feel good mm -hmm. father, uh, a toughness and a resilience, this happened to me because I'm capable of, of taking it on because I'm capable of, of resolving this issue. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm having challenges in my marriage because I'm capable of resolving them. So that's one way, one way. It's happening for me. Exactly. Happening for me, not to me. And then the secondary piece, mm. and those are, those are specific attitudes. Those are specific. Um, yeah, they're just, they're attitudes about life, but it's not necessarily the gratitude aspect. So the gratitude side is, I'm satisfied with what is in my life. I'm happy. I'm joyful that this other mm -hmm. thing is here. I'm joyful that I'm with my wife. I have chosen her to be with me. I'm very happy. I'm mm -hmm. joyful that my spouse is with me. I'm joyful that they're in my life. I'm happy and grateful for my kids that they're in my life, that they're the ones I get to spend my time with. I'm grateful for whatever. Uh, once it becomes that once it becomes a state and so when we go from the emotion to the state the emotion being uh the happiness the state being the gratitude they stop becoming possessions and things you own and and when i say they i'm doing full inclusion people and things those elements stop becoming possessions that you own mm -hmm. and they become things that you're responsible for they become a part of your regular consciousness and so they they effectively in a simple term they become a part of your identity and the graduation from there's a separation from me as the father and everything else is happening in my life to, as you alluded to before, the responsibility that everything here is a part of my consciousness. My family is a part of my consciousness. I'm constantly thinking about them. My spouse, my wife is a part of my consciousness. I'm constantly thinking about them. The foundation of that state is gratitude. And it happens exactly as you're describing. You, you say, Mm -hmm. I'm happy that they're here. You write them down. Um, another guest uh, recently, uh, 
uh, at the time of this recording, released or released, but Chris Felton just talked about it. He had these issues with his ex-wife, and until he overcame these issues with his ex-wife, he wasn't going to be able to move on to the next stage for him. And so what he did was he just wrote down all the things he was mm -hmm. grateful for. And it started with one thing. I'm just grateful that you're showing up for my kids. And it, and it grew from there. Mm -hmm. And he was able to fix his life. And if you've listened to this, Feel Good Fathers, and you've listened to the Chris Felton episode, the link will be down, down in the description. That gratitude practice transformed his life. And it can transform your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. <laughs> yeah, I practice gratitude. Uh, yeah, and, and it also becomes, I, I practice gratitude where I write in my journal. And I don't write in my journal every day. But I've, I've, I've been doing it for so long now that I just am always looking around and seeing what I'm grateful for. It's just a part of who I am. And it, like you said, it can transform your life. And who you are being in your relationship is, is why should it be any different than who you are being at work or who you are being at the grocery store or who you are being at your church or who you are being anywhere, who you are being should always be the same. It's just who you are. And so I like the way you talked about gratitude and, 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 and how it can transform your life because it really can. And it's a small thing and that's what it comes down to. It's the little teeny small things that can make a huge difference in your life and have a huge impact on all the people in your life. I love it. Uh, Wendy, if folks mm -hmm. feel good, fun, cool stuff. Yeah, it's awesome. If folks want to get a hold of you and they want to uh, learn more about you and what you're all about, uh, where can they go? Well, I have a website, wendyrovers.com. Uh, we have a little YouTube channel, Divorce Thrive. You could check that out, getting going this year. And I'll also send over the 90 day. Yes, I'm all in my marriage challenge. So if you're struggling in your marriage, you know, even just a little bit and you want to amp it up and really wow it, you could try this 90 days. Absolutely love it. Yeah, that would be great. Thanks. And thanks yeah. for having me here today. Thank you. Uh, Wendy Rivers, everybody. Hey, if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe. I look forward to chatting with you. Awesome. And feel good fathers, just so you know, right about here, it's that video. YouTube is telling you that this video, this is the next one you should watch. It's going to be another great interview for feel good fatherhood. Click it. Click it. I'll see you there. See you there.